Listening activity number six. You will listen to a conversation between two friends. As you listen, answer the questions below. Hello, Mike. What's up with you? Oh, Tom, it's my landlady again. You're always in trouble. What is it this time? You see, she's left a note for me. Just read it. Well, did you leave the front door open? I honestly don't remember. I got back late from a party. Anyway, what does it matter? It's all complaints in that house. First noise, then the bathroom. Well, in that case, why don't you look around for another place? I've already started. I looked in the paper this morning. Plenty of advertisements as usual, but most of the places are too far from school. Look, why don't you come and share with us? But surely there are four of you in the flat already, aren't there? Yes, but you know Jane is leaving at the end of the month. She's got a job down south. There will be a spare room. It's rather small, but you can sleep there for the moment till you find a nice one. That's a good idea. How many rooms do you have? We have four bedrooms and a big living room. What are the arrangements? Well, we share all expenses, of course: rent, light, and heating. What about food? Or we each buy our own. It works out fine that way, and you can do anything you like in your own room. But there is one thing. What's that? Don't leave the front door open. Strange people may wander in. All right. I promise that won't happen again. By the way, when is Jane leaving? Let me see. Yes, this time next week. Today is the twenty-second Tuesday, so she's leaving on the twenty-ninth. Well, I'll I'll move in in one day after she leaves. Yes, no problem. We will get ready by then. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Listening activity number six. You will listen to a conversation between two friends. As you listen, answer the questions below. Hello, Mike. What's up with you? Oh, Tom, it's my landlady again. You're always in trouble. What is it this time? You see, she's left a note for me. Just read it. Well, did you leave the front door open? I honestly don't remember. I got back late from a party. Anyway, what does it matter? It's all complaints in that house. First noise, then the bathroom. Well, in that case, why don't you look around for another place? I've already started. I looked in the paper this morning. Plenty of advertisements as usual, but most of the places are too far from school. Look, why don't you come and share with us? But surely there are four of you in the flat already, aren't there? Yes, but you know Jane is leaving at the end of the month. She's got a job down south. There will be a spare room. It's rather small, but you can sleep there for the moment till you find a nice one. That's a good idea. How many rooms do you have? We have. Four bedrooms and a big living room. What are the arrangements? Well, we share all expenses, of course: rent, light, and heating. What about food? Well, we each buy our own. It works out fine that way, and you can do anything you like in your own room. But there is one thing. What's that? Don't leave the front door open. Strange people may wander in. All right. I promise that won't happen again. By the way. When is Jane leaving? Let me see. Yes, this time next week. Today is the twenty-second Tuesday, so she's leaving on the twenty-ninth. Well, I'll I'll move in in one day after she leaves. Yes, no problem. We will get ready by then. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.
Listening activity number seven. You will hear a dialogue between a researcher and a chief librarian. Listen to the dialogue and answer the questions. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Peter. Do come in. You've brought the results with you, I see. Yes, in fact, I completed the survey last week. So I can hear the criticisms now, then. That's right. And perhaps you'll be able to tell me what can be done about them. I'll certainly do my best. Well, what would you like to start with? The catalogues. I'm afraid many of the science students complain that they're incomplete and out of date. They think they're really bad. Is there anything you can do to improve things there? Oh yes, we can either check all the cards and reprint them where necessary, or we can change to a computer system. How much would it cost to do the first? Oh, about six thousand pounds. And how long would it take? Oh, maybe three months. And how much would it cost to do the second? Change to a computer system? Yes. Oh, about sixty thousand pounds. And how long would that take? Oh, nine months, I'd say. About nine months. Thank you. Now, next, I'd like to move on to the borrowing facilities. The social science students describe these as rather disappointing. They complained that they were only allowed to borrow three books. Most of them felt they ought to be able to borrow more books, perhaps five or six for undergraduates, and up to ten for graduates. That may be possible. Also, they'd like to be able to keep the books for a longer period, say three weeks instead of the present two. That also sounds reasonable. I'll see what I can do. Listening activity number eight. You are going to hear a conversation between a student and a counsellor. Listen to the conversation and answer the questions. Good morning. Sit down, please. Good morning. What can I do for you? I've come for some advice. My name is Sophie Cole, and I'm Italian. I came to this country about six months ago. Yes. And I don't know if I can use my qualifications here. Maybe I need to do another course. And then I'm worried about my English. You see, I'm worried about not understanding、uh, people very well. I see. Hmm. Well, I need to get a bit more information about you. What are you doing at the moment? Now I'm studying English because my English is very poor. How many hours a week? Twelve hours a week. Yes, but how many? Oh, well, never mind. What sort of job do you see yourself doing in this country? Well, in this country, ah,、uh, well, it seems that it's very difficult for me to get a job. They want experience in this country, and I haven't got any. My qualifications may not be accepted here, and with all the unemployment and everything, I'm, I'm really worried. Yes, but what kind of work do you want to do? I'm a civil engineer, but that's not the problem. If I have a degree, I can work for myself. Do you have any engineering qualifications? Yes, I studied civil engineering at the university in Rome. Oh, when was that? About three years ago. Mm-hmm. And then, what did you do? I mean, did you have any work experience in your own country? Oh yes, I worked for a big company for about two years after the university. Now, I would like to get a master degree in this country. But first, I need to study more English. Yes,、uh, I think you are quite right. First, you need to improve your English. Then you could start looking for a university and apply for the degree in engineering for next year. Have you enrolled in our intensive English courses? Yes. I suggest you study English for another six months, then take the IELTS test. This test will check how well your English is. And the score will be accepted by all the universities in UK. Here is the IELTS test booklet. You can get more details about this test. That's a great help. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Listening activity number nine. You are going to hear a talk about the services in Ealing College. Look at questions one to ten. Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions one to ten.
Welcome to Ealing College of Higher Education. Today I'll talk about student services at the college. All student services are to be found in the North Building. Social life and some of the welfare services are run by the student union of which all students are automatically members. After enrolment, take your receipt to the student union and they will give you your student card. Your student card also entitles you to membership in the student and staff club. The student union will give you a handbook which gives more details on all the services offered plus more information on the health service, accommodation and so on. Let's talk about medical services first. ECHE has a student health centre. The centre is open from 9.30 to 8.45 Monday to Thursday and from 9.30 to 5 on Fridays during term time. The college doctor, Dr. B. Kierens, holds a surgery in the medical centre four days a week, Monday and Tuesday mornings, Thursday afternoons, and either Wednesday or Friday afternoons. The nurse will tell you which one on any particular week. Appointments for these are made through the nurses and are usually for the following day. Outside of these times, Dr. Kearns can be found at her surgery, which is located at number 2 Ascot Avenue, W5, very close to college. During your stay in England, you must register with a local doctor, and if you live in the London borough of Ealing, you can register with Dr. Kearns. Listening activity number 10. You will hear the last part of the talk about the services in the college. Now look at questions 1 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the talk and answer questions 1 to 10. Last time I talked about the student services in the college. Today I'd like to talk about the counselling services. The college counselling service is located in the North Building. The counsellors are Ms. Penny Rawson and Ms. Anne David. I have asked Ms. Rawson to join us today to discuss their role. Ms. Rawson. Thank you. Both Anne and I are full-time counsellors. Students either come to us on their own or are referred to us by a tutor. We see students individually run group therapy sessions and courses of sessions as we think necessary. We are here to help with any problems, no matter how great or small, such as homesickness, relationship difficulties, death and separation, sexual problems, undue stress due to work and so on. You will not be the first to be homesick, find college life stressful or decisions problematic so please don't hesitate to come and have a chat if there's anything bothering you. This is a confidential service, but we are willing to arrange with your course directors, your tutors, student union officers, career department or doctors. We can also put you in touch with outside counselling services. As a part of the university, all counselling is free of charge for full-time students. I know some of you may feel that seeing a counsellor has a stigma attached to it, but let me assure you, even the best balanced individuals encounter situations where they need someone to talk with, so please don't hesitate. You're welcome to make use of this service. We hope you will enjoy your studies at the university. Thank you. <laughs> 